The stories of Beatrix Potter have captured the imagination of children and adults all over the world. She is one of the few authors who have become a household name in homes across the globe, unimpeded by geography, culture and language. But would the stories of Peter Rabbit, Jeremy Fisher and Mrs Tiggywinkle have inspired such love and enjoyment without the artwork that we can almost all recognise with just a single glance? From prodigious childhood drawings to rich scientific illustrations, we're going to explore Miss Potter's journey, not just as a marvellous storyteller, but as an artist. Born at number two Bolton Gardens, South Kensington in London, Helen Beatrix Potter was the first child of Helen and Rupert Potter. Her father Rupert was a keen photographer who found no better subjects for his camera than his beloved family and friends. None more so than his little daughter Beatrix, of whom he was very fond. Even from a young age, Beatrix loved to draw. Like her father, she found inspiration in the world around her. This watercolour of sheep was painted by Beatrix Potter at the age of only nine or ten. Even at that age, her work showed incredible realism. In 1872, when Beatrix was six years old, her little brother, Walter Bertram Potter, was born at their family home in South Kensington. In him, she would find a kindred spirit who shared her love of nature, and together they took inspiration from their family holidays in Scotland. With her love of nature, Beatrix Potter's interest was in drawing animals, flora, fungi and landscapes, rather than people. This watercolour of a rose was painted by Beatrix Potter in the 1890s, when she was in her 20s. Her meticulous attention to detail can be seen in the realism of the leaves. The famous Pre-Raphaelite artist and friend of the Potter family, Sir John Everett Millet, once told Beatrix, plenty of people can draw, but you have observation. She would often visit the nearby museums in Kensington to deepen her knowledge of natural history. At what is now the Victoria and Albert Museum, she studied drawings, prints and costumes. Beatrix Potter studied with fascination the animals she drew. She would even boil dead ones to see their bone structure in order to make her drawings more anatomically correct. She owned many pets herself, including a hedgehog named Mrs. Tiggy. The very Mrs. Tiggy who became the inspiration for her book, The Tale of Mrs. Tiggywinkle. Though perhaps most famous for her watercolours, Beatrix Potter also used various other techniques in her art, from pencil and pen and ink to oil paints. Like Beatrix, her brother Bertram shared her love of nature. Together, they would often take nature walks to find animals, flowers, insects or fungi. While she was fascinated by the animals and flowers in nature, it was mycology, the study of fungi, that was one of her greatest passions. Beatrix's mentor, the Scottish naturalist Charles Mackintosh, would send her fungi to study and paint, nurturing the budding mycologist. In the book, Fascinating Acquaintance, we learn more about Beatrix Potter and Charles Mackintosh and their interest in the natural history of the Dunkeld area of Perthshire in Scotland. The Armit Museum in Ambleside in the English Lake District holds several hundred examples of Beatrix Potter's natural history artwork. With her skill as an artist and her fascination for the natural world, Beatrix Potter also became an adept scientific illustrator. By 1896, she had developed her own theory of how fungi spores reproduced. She authored the scientific paper on the germination of the spores of Agaricinae at a time when women were excluded from many scientific societies. This meant that Beatrix Potter's paper had to be presented by one of the mycologists from the Royal Botanic Gardens, Kew, 
At a meeting of the Linnean Society in London on the 1st of April 1897, because women could not attend there. Sadly, her paper has since been lost. Not one to conform to contemporary norms, Beatrix wanted to earn some money of her own. Using her talent for drawing and painting, she made attractive illustrations and sold them to card makers, including Hildesheimer and Faulkner in 1890. This charming Christmas card is now being preserved for the ages by the Beatrix Potter Society. Then in September 1893, she wrote a picture letter to Noel Moore, and it was all about a naughty rabbit named Peter. It was only when she was persuaded a few years later that Beatrix turned her picture letter into a book. One of those who encouraged her was Canon Hardwick Brawnsley, whom she had first met when on holiday at Ray Castle in the Lake District in 1882 and who became a great inspiration for her. This facsimile book is based on a manuscript in the Society's possession, containing Canon Hardwick Brawnsley's first form of the tale of Peter Rabbit, as written out by Leslie Linder and accompanied by the black and white illustrations from Beatrix's privately printed 1901 edition of the tale. Beatrix Potter used her artwork in her books, most famously in The Tale of Peter Rabbit, published in 1902. While it is now translated into many languages, the first official translation was in Dutch in 1912. Other books soon followed, illustrated with her sketches. This unused drawing, made for The Tale of the Pie and the Patty Pan, now belongs to the Beatrix Potter Society's collection. With her profits from the tale of Peter Rabbit and a small legacy left to her by her aunt, Beatrix Potter bought Hilltop Farm in 1905. Now a popular destination for fans of Miss Potter, Hilltop was the inspiration for many of her tales, including the tale of Tom Kitten. The Lake District became a new inspiration for Beatrix Potter's little books. In the tale of Pigling Bland, for example, Beatrix drew the crossroads near Sorry and Esthwaite Water with its now famous signpost. The crossroads and sign are still recognisable today. In 1913, Beatrix Potter married William Helis, her local solicitor, and finally settled in the Lake District. Not one to stay sitting down, she was very involved in farming and sheep brooding. Then with age, her eyesight began to deteriorate, making those detailed illustrations that so many had marvelled at more and more difficult to work on. While in the Lake District, Beatrix Potter became more involved with the National Trust and its plans to preserve the land there. In the 1920s, she used her artwork to help buy and save Cockshop Point near Windermere. In this case, selling some redrawn Peter Rabbit illustrations to supporters in America. Did you know that Peter Rabbit is one of the oldest licensed characters? Beatrix Potter was very keen on her sideshows as she called them. A woman of unusual entrepreneurial genius, she recognised that spin-off merchandise such as painting books, board games and printed wallpapers would be marketing assets for her work and so she registered a Peter Rabbit doll on the 28th of December 1903. Peter Rabbit and his friends now appear not only in books but also on china and clothing as figurines and soft toys and featuring in games and on wallpaper. They can even be seen on television and in the cinema. And with the money Beatrix Potter earned from her merchandise, she bought even more land in the Lake District to preserve for future generations.
Today, Beatrix Potter's work is appreciated the world over. In 2006, the Beatrix Potter Reference Library was established in the grounds of Saitama Children's Zoo in Japan by Daito Bunker University. The building is a replica of Beatrix Potter's hilltop in Cumbria in the UK and holds rare items in its collection, including two of Beatrix Potter's privately printed little book editions, a copy of A Happy Pair from 1893, original watercolours and other first edition books. Beatrix Potter was much more than just the creator of Peter Rabbit. She was an artist, scientist, farmer, sheep breeder and preservationist. After her death in 1943, she donated 15 farms and 1,600 hectares of land to the National Trust. The English landscape owes much to her and that is something we can still enjoy today. The Beatrix Potter Society has been a registered charity in the United Kingdom since 1980. It promotes the study and appreciation of the life and works of Beatrix Potter, author of The Tale of Peter Rabbit and other classics of children's literature, but also a landscape and natural history artist, diarist, farmer and preservationist. The Beatrix Potter Society upholds and protects the integrity of the inimitable and unique work of Beatrix Potter, her aims and bequests, and brings together people all over the world who share these interests. Join us at www.beatrixpottersociety.org.uk forward slash membership and learn about the benefits of becoming a member of the Beatrix Potter Society of its charitable and educational aims and help us keep alive the legacy of this inspiring woman.